Hello and welcome. Uh, in this session we're going to look at installing the CAR network emulator. Okay, you can see it here. It's on the uh, uh, the uh, uh, navy.mil site. Okay, um, we're going to install it on, um, um, on a virtual desktop. Okay, so let's uh, set up the prerequisites of what we want first. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is download VirtualBox. Okay, so if you touch type in VirtualBox into any uh, search engine, uh, go to Downloads, Oracle VM VirtualBox. Okay, uh, I'm uh, looking uh, to do it on a Windows 10 platform. Uh, so I'm going to select the Windows Hosts one here and then install it. Okay, uh, when you install it, you'll have uh, an icon here on your desktop. Uh, so just double click that icon and you'll see a situation like this. So we're going to, we need to install a new system here. Okay, second uh, boat out will be to get what the, um, the operating system that we're going to install on. Okay, so uh, if you just type in Ubuntu Desktop, okay, and go to download Ubuntu Desktop, okay, and the version we're looking for here is 16.04. Uh, LTS for long-term support and just click download okay you'll be asked to donate uh, here uh, if you don't want to donate uh, you can set those to zero uh, and it will take you to the download um, area uh, however it is good uh, to keep the project um, alive by downloading or if you ever get the chance of a couple of uh, a couple of extra bob you can always throw it there so you can see here the download is completely is is working away. Uh, it's about 1.5 gigs. Okay, so uh, it's a reasonably decent download. Okay, um, next thing to do, okay, is to set it up on our VM. Okay, so how I'll do that is I'll come over here and click the new icon. Okay, so for a new, you can have a, as many as you like here. Uh, I'm going to call this the Core Emulator. And uh, you can see there the type will be Linux, okay, and the version will be Ubuntu 64 bit. Okay, I'm going to click next. Uh, by default, it's offering me just one gig of memory. I'm going to set that up to four gigs. Uh, 4096 there should be should be ample. Uh, if I click next, I go to select the center one here, create a virtual hard disk now, and click create. Uh, I, I'm going to select, select the second one here, uh, VHD, Virtual Hard Disk, click Next. I'm going to be happy enough with the dynamically allocated, yeah, okay, so I'll click Next. Uh, here it's offering 10 gigs uh, to install. Um, Ubuntu will require a minimum of 8, we won't use that, but 10 will be more than enough there, so click Create. Okay, and you'll see there we have Core Emulator. Uh, powered off. Okay, we're not there just yet. Okay, uh, before starting it, what I want you to do is go to settings. Okay, and a couple of things we can change here. You can see here we've got a number of uh, settings we can change. Uh, under general and advanced, okay, I go to shared clipboard and drag and drop. I'm going to uh, set these to bi-directional. Okay, there. Uh, you can see there where I have the snapshot in across, so it's, it's okay with that. Uh, again, uh, now this says, I should have, uh, before I said, said okay to that. The next thing I want to do, sorry, it should be back in settings. If you come down here to storage, and what we want to do is set the location of where you downloaded your ISO. So you'll see here it's set to empty uh, under controller IDE. And I want you to click this icon here, uh, which is choose a virtual hard disk, uh, uh, optical disk. Okay. Uh, so you can see I have it downloaded here already. There's Ubuntu. Okay. Uh, uh, there. And I'll be happy enough with that. And I'll click open. Uh, so you can see uh, the size it is and where I have it. Okay. And I'll click OK to that. Now I'm at the point where I can start installing Ubuntu. So I'll click Start.
Okay, uh, the virtual box will open up. Okay. Okay, we're at this point where we can now go to install Ubuntu. So I'll click install Ubuntu. Uh, I can take these two options, download updates uh, when installing and install third-party graphics, etc. Uh, click continue. Uh, uh, erase disk and install Ubuntu. Now this is erasing the virtual disk, so don't worry if you're... I'm using Windows 10 here, it's not going to erase the whole uh, uh, box, so it's, it's okay. So click install now. I'll click continue here. Now you see it's picking up uh, my location in Dublin. I'll click continue. Again, I'm leaving the keyboard settings at Irish. You can change yours to whatever. To continue and I'm going to give it a name so I'll just give DK so uh, you can see DK VirtualBox uh, and I'm going to set a password here again I will need this password whenever I go to install something and I'm going to click on log on automatically here and click continue uh, now what's going to happen now is it will start copying the files. Uh, sorry, if you can see it there. Uh, copying files here at the bottom. And then it will start and slow. So I'm just going to pause the video and wait till that finishes. It'll be just like watching paint dry. So uh, just it will take about five, five, ten minutes. Okay, when the system has finished installing, uh, you'll see a restart button now. So I'll just click restart and let the system uh, reboot. Okay, um, uh, you'll see a remove installation folder, just hit enter there, and uh, that should do the trick. So we let it restart. Okay, uh, once it restarts, uh, we're back here at the desktop. Um, I can see uh, um, I've got the ordinary Ubuntu desktop. If you look down here at the bottom, you can see uh, just where I'm pointing the mouse at the moment. Uh, you can see if there's any disk activity uh, going on. Uh, so just wait till all that stops. Uh, okay, now what I want to be able to do is to copy and paste uh, some commands uh, into the uh, terminal window. Uh, now in order to do that, in order to, uh, if you remember when we set, had the settings, uh, we said we set it things for and drag and drop. We set it to bidirectional. Uh, also, I need to do this. If I go to devices and insert uh, guest edition CD image. Okay, so we need to do this to enable copy and paste. So I'll click that, and it will ask me now to do I want to run the? Do I trust this? Yes, I do. So I'm going to click run. I now have to authenticate that with the password. Uh, that's the password I used earlier on. Okay, and click authenticate. Okay, so we just let it do its thing there. Uh, uh, it's going to add on uh, uh, the guest editions. Now remember, copy and paste will not work unless you do this. Okay, so notice here, we'll let, let it run first and notice here that the, um, it won't actually uh, insert the guest editions until the system is restarted. So I'm just going to press return to close that window. Okay, and um, sorry, where am I here? Let's return. And if I right click and open terminal, uh, I'm just going to type in reboot. Uh, to reboot the system and when it reboots copy and paste should work just fine okay the system is now rebooted so I'm just going to test to see if copy and paste works so I'm going to right click on the desktop and open terminal now I've, I've, I've just copied in notepad there uh, this is a test so I'll just right click and I can see paste is available so uh, this is a test okay so now we're ready to start our install of the Core Network Emulator. So I'm just going to move uh, um, uh, things around a little bit here. Uh, I have, um, I've opened up a, a, 
a document here, Word file. Again, you can get this from the, uh, I have it in the uh, comments part of this video. Uh, you can download that. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, uh, click uh, drag over this side. This is why I wanted the copy and paste working. I want to uh, sudo apt install core network. And you can see here I've got the dollar sign. So copy everything except the dollar sign. Okay, so right click and copy. And now I'll right click and paste into uh, here. So return there. It's going to ask me for my password. Every time I reboot, it's, that's going to happen. Uh, I'm going to say yes to that. Uh, and uh, let it work away. Okay, so basically what I'm going to do is copy and paste all of these uh, commands and then carry on down here and paste all those commands all the way down through this document. You'll notice here there's a restart the system here. Okay, so we're going to have to do that. Uh, uh, this uh, to update in future, uh, you can ignore that only if there's an update. Then we'll come along to install the network software. Okay, uh, then setting up Wireshark. After we set up Wireshark, we have to uh, uh, reboot again. Uh, then we'd set up Quega. Okay, so uh, uh, again, what I'm going to do here is. Uh, get update. Uh, I'm going to just pause the video uh, while I'm pasting in all of these uh, and I'll stop where we need to come to uh, any issues at all. Um, I'll just pause the video here and do all of these. I'm sure you were well able to copy and paste so let's do that. Um, now, when you come to this command, uh, install IPSEC Tools, Raccoon, Traceroute, uh, Wireshark, you're going to be asked a few questions. So, uh, let me just uh, run this uh, here. and um, So, you'll be asked a couple of questions on the screen. Okay, so the first question you're asked, should non-super users be able to capture packets? I'm going to um, uh, say yes to that. Okay, so uh, transfer over to yes, hit return. Uh, configure the mode direct will do me there, so I'm happy enough with that. And the last question, yeah, that should be okay now. Okay, and carry on then installing. Okay, so at this point here, after I've uh, set up Wireshark, I'm just going to reboot here to activate the changes. Um, this will be in this screen and reboot. Uh, right, guys, I've been working my way down through the file. I'm at the point now where I'm uh, editing a file. Okay, this one here. And what I'm doing is changing the end of it to look like this. Uh, so if I paste in that nano, uh, I'm actually editing the, editing the daemons file. I uh, just use my directional arrow to go down to the end. Okay, so there's Zebra. Okay, I uh, will set that to yes. Y -E -S. And OSPFD, that can be set to yes as well. To get out of this, I'll go Control X. Uh, y on the keyboard to save changes and hit return and that's that okay uh, the next thing now just set up the environment variables okay um, uh, okay uh, finally I'm at the end uh, now again these two commands whenever I need to start it I'll just start the demo up first okay so just right click and paste that in uh, start the demo okay and then now start core GUI and it should start up just fine. Okay, and we should see something like that. Okay, so there's my uh, core installation now up and running. And I can start uh, working away now doing some networking. 
Okay, uh, that's for the install uh, video finished. Uh, our next video now will be on getting started with the emulator itself. Uh, thank you for your attention.